Today is Saturday, November 3rd, 2018. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the Listener Feedback Show for Episode 6 of Survivor David vs. Goliath. That's right. Joanne and I did the recap on Wednesday. Get all the broad strokes, maybe some observations and some predictions included in there. But then come Saturday, it's your turn. Time for the Survivor Super Fan to step forward and share some knowledge. Drop some predictions on us, especially as we head into this big merge episode. But first, we got to look back at what happens before the merge. If you say so. Uh huh. How many do we have this week? 20. 20. 20 super fans showed up. We've got a couple of new folks, too. Awesome. We do. Yeah, outstanding. Anything we need to cover before we get going? Not that I can think of. Let's get to it. What'd you think, Pete? Hey, Joanne and Stacy. This is Pete from Boston calling here. And I got to let out a great big... Another very good episode of Survivor, David vs. Goliath. I'm really liking, you know, this season and seeing the dynamics of all the players. It's been a very good season. However, this episode was, well, I wouldn't say the outcome was anticlimactic, but I will say the way the challenges were it was, especially the, the immunity challenge. That team had no chance with those two girls, you know, Angelina and Lyrsa. Nick was the strongest guy, but there's only so much he could do, and poor good old Mike, but you gotta applaud the effort, though. The other teams were just too good. It was like a battle of two Goliaths and one David. What are you gonna do? It's Survivor, and that's how the game rolls. But man, I really thought, guys, the way the edit was going, that Angelina was was gonna go. I don't know if you agree, Stacy, but yeah, the way that Nick was gonna maybe make the move, because he didn't trust Angelina. I wasn't surprised with Mike, because Mike even said he wants to stay with the Goliath, because he's afraid that they would turn on him, this and that. So, but I'm more surprised with what Nick did. I don't know that it made sense for Nick to get rid of Lyrsa, because he had her as an alliance. And, and what was she going to do? She wasn't going to turn on him anyway. So I don't get that move. Do you guys think Nick is going to be in trouble now come the merge? Because that might hurt him, dear. And some of the other guys, even on the David tribe, might not trust him. We'll see what happens. But I'm looking forward to seeing how Christian works his magic. With, it looks like he's working with Alec. We'll see how that is. Or, you know, what happens with the Dan and Cal. Are they going to be reunited? John. And then maybe you've got all these idols. You know, two with Dan, one with Davey. We'll see how that works, guys. A lot to look forward to next week. But I think, honestly, it would have been better off if Angelina went. Because we know how good of a play Angelina is as we saw in the next time guys so what do you guys think anything stand out come the merge and I, i'm a little bit worried about nick guys now because i don't think he made the right choice what do you guys think we'll see take care Woo. all right thanks pete yeah i don't think nick really had a choice if he wanted to stay in at all with mike yeah how so well I don't think it would have served any purpose for them, him to vote with Lyrsa and have a tie and go to Rocks. Then he could have gone home. I just don't see that being in his best interest. You know who also thought Nick made the best choice? Who? Lyrsa. In an interview, I think it was with EW that I was reading through, she said, yeah, he, he made the best choice. Okay. So that's pretty much all you need to know about that. <laughs> Well, and I thought he he probably even told her ahead of time, look, they won't budge, so I need to write your name down, too. Hmm. You I don't think? really No, I didn't see any evidence that that was well, the no, case. Well, no, there was no evidence, come but across sometimes it in, in that does happen. Afterwards. Sure, sure, it's a possibility. I'm just telling you there's nothing, even in the day after, nothing in the interviews that I saw that suggests that. Well, what else was interesting in that is that... Uh, Oh, well, we'll get to it. There, there's some other things. Why do you do that? 
Anticipation, delayed oh, gratification. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Next up, we got a call from Kim J. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. This is Kim J from Nashville. I finally got a vote of point this week. Yay. I had zero confidence going into the episode, so of course this is the week <laughs> I finally get a vote off right. The entertainment value in me wanted to see Angelina go home, but I do think that for the betterment of the game going forward, it's best to have these strategic people mm-hmm. make it to the merge, and that makes for the best possible situation post-merge. I think that's part of the problem that we had with Ghost Island is we had a lot of our strong strategic people go pre-merge and then didn't leave a lot lot of people post merge we got left with yeah. a lot of duds so anyway i've duds. ranked the 13 remaining <laughs> players this week in terms of who i think is most oh, cool. to least likely to go home so 13 i have angelina she said the magic words that she's a strategic mastermind and i think that her pushing for christian to go home is a huge huge mistake you're never supposed to be the person throwing out the name and once word gets back to christian and he asks well who's throwing my name out and they say angelina i think that's really going to put her big time on the chopping block number 12 i have alec I don't really know why. We just haven't seen a whole lot of Alex's story. I just think he's kind of a throwaway person. So I've got him at number 12. Mm-hmm. 11, I've got Elizabeth. She's the first David mm-hmm. on here. I think she's the most vulnerable because she just doesn't seem to have anybody that she's got an alliance with, really, at this point. Larissa's gone. Don't really know how tight her and Kara are. I just feel like she's kind of a person alone. At number 10, I have Gabby, who's actually my USB, but I do think she's also at risk of going home as well, too, and that might be a way to sort of get at Christian. We don't know if we can get Christian right now, but let's get his right-hand girl. Nine, I've got Carl. Again, I'm just not sure how tight his alliances are. I, I know he's got a tight alliance with Davey, but I'm just not sure who else. At eight, I've got Dan, just because everybody knows he's got an idol and I just I'm just not really convinced yet he's that smart he might be a person that you target as being a threat the physical threat at this point in the game so I'm kind of seeing him as a potential threat too at number seven I've got Nick he's just kind of right here in the middle I think he should be safe six I've got Christian I don't think he's going home five I've got Kara four Allison Three, I've got John. I, he really seems to be in a good position. I don't know how long it's going to last, but so far, so good for him. Two, I've got Davey. He's got an idol, and I feel like he can actually know when to use it. And then number one, I've got Mike. I really think he's in the best position wow. going into next week. I think he's on no one's radar to get rid of him. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. I'm thinking Angelina as my vote off. Who knows? Merge episodes are always fun. So here we go. Excellent. I like that right. ranking. That's an interesting way to look at it, too. Normally what happens at the merge is they start to take out the bigger threats in the context of the game and the people who were in danger of going because they offered the least to individual tribes now are all of a sudden the least interesting people in the game and not necessarily a target. But this season's been going different, huh? Well, over the last couple seasons, really, they've Mm -hmm. focused more on the dangerous strategic players versus, you know, Mm -hmm. the big guys. Right. They're not yeah, going as much on the physicality after merge as they have in most of the previous seasons. Yeah, there was a extra video for Dan this week. It was interesting. True. Dan, it was Dan talking about getting the uh, the extra the second hidden immunity idol. It's interesting for a couple of reasons. One, he says this one he's not going to tell anyone about because we were curious. We figured he would blab right away. The other reason it's interesting is that it wasn't in the episode. So maybe that's telling us that having the second idol isn't important. Significant. Yeah, for Dan. A.K.A. double idol whammy. He could go with both. Oh, See how it supports still it? holding on to that. <laughs> I'd love that idea. <laughs> yeah, but he said everybody else knows he's got the first one, but he's going to keep this one a secret, so... I agree. He he should be a big target. Well, that was slightly encouraging, but I don't know. I have to think he's going <laughs> to tell Kara. Yeah. He says he's not not telling anybody, but I thought, yeah. I'm not sure I'm buying that. That's the test for sure, that'll right? That'll be the test. When Kryptonite comes back, is he going to be so weak that he folds and tells her? <clears throat> yep. How long will it take her to get that out, out of him? <laughs> Good deal. Thanks, Kim J. Next up, we got an email from Noel in Pennsylvania. Dear Stacy and Joanne. I like your variation there. Yeah, that's rare. (laughs) I used to start my listener feedback a day too late because of my crazy work schedule. Yes, that is a common theme. 
While this week's show cannot compare to the jacket and egg drama of last week, it was an exciting episode. I love the editing this year. I appreciate how the in the previous episode segments sometimes contain new scenes not shown the previous week. Yep. Such as showing you that Angelina did in fact vote for Lyrsa just to get her jacket. I think this move by Angelina has put a giant target on her cold back. Plus, with the clip next week showing her calling herself a mastermind, it's not making it look good for her. I do wonder if outerwear will become currency later in this season or in future seasons. I can see where a better night's sleep because you're not as cold or as wet would be incredibly beneficial. Oh, and FYI, after hearing what a few people said and reading a few interviews, I just want to point out a few things which perhaps you have already touched on. People complain that Angelina should not have needed Natalie's seemingly waterproof jacket because she had a sweater, but I can assure you that a cold, wet sweater could not compare to a nice waterproof jacket. Also, many people have criticized Angelina for not packing better for the show, but the contestants do not get to directly choose their outfits. This is true. Yeah, we've covered that before. They send numerous options to production who chooses an outfit, so it appears that these people were stranded on an island wearing their everyday clothes, not planning on going on a TV show where there will be a cyclone. Nick was sure in a tough spot. I think the alliance with Mike is solid, but he did not have the cojones to get Mike to agree to vote out Angelina and instead agreed to vote out Lyrsa, which was probably not the best move for him. I can see where he would want to avoid going to Rocks, but with the merge coming, is it better that he has Mike's trust or Lyrsa still in the game? I guess time will tell. I have to admit Christian is my favorite, probably mostly because of his edit. We did not need to see him spearfishing. This is true because he wasn't successful. But it sure did make the episode more entertaining. Gabby, however, is driving me crazy. I'm hoping her edit is setting her up to have some amazing story of gaining self-confidence. But I worry that this is more Christian story and that Gabby just provides a nice contrast for that. I'm not sure she will last much longer. I'm also loving John. I didn't think he would be so down-to-earth approachable and kind of awkward. He's great in front of big crowds when in costume, but in small settings, stripped of all normal comforts, he's a different person and I appreciate seeing this side of him. I hope he goes far, but with the merge coming up, it would not be smart to keep such a strong player around. Next week, I hope Dan gets voted out with two idols in his pocket. You and me both, sister. Wouldn't that make for great TV? Amen. I wonder though if he uses an idol and the idol nullifier is played on his idol, but he knows about it and plays his second idol in advance, would he be safe? Can he use two idols <clears throat> on one person? Does the idol nullifier only block block out one idol or all idols played for that person? I suspect we will never know unless production tells us because I bet Carl is smart enough to keep his mouth shut and not tell the others about his secret weapon. Elizabeth has also put a pretty big target on her back with her outburst about making the shelter more comfortable won't she be mad if she made all these changes only to merge to a different camp? <laughs> I like that. That's cruel. Well, that's all for oh. now. Thanks for the great show. It makes me look forward to my one-hour commute to work. Thank you, Noel. You did excellent on your first feedback there. Welcome. And speaking of another newbie, next up we got a call from Grace. Hi, Joanne and Stacey. I'm Grace from California. I finally worked up the courage to send in an audio clip for the listener feedback show. Yay. I really felt for Gabby in this episode, well, and I love audio. her connection with Allison. I could see them becoming a strong alliance. I also think Christian is more with Gabby than with the Bochachos. I don't know, it's just a feeling. I think they have a bigger connection. I also really wanted Tiva to go to Tribal Council because I would have loved to see how that would have played out with maybe Dan going home. Going into the merge, I think, even though the Goliaths have numbers, I think a Goliath will go home first. I see Allison mm -hmm. changing the game up and hopefully voting out Dan with two idols. I could also see Angelina going home next because she's such a strategic threat. Um, Christian is my number one guy to win right now. I really like him, and I think he's getting a lot of screen time, which could show that I don't think that he's going to go soon. Thank you for all you do. I'll try to call in next week. Bye. All right. Good job, Grace. We hope you do. You did a great job there. Next up, we got a call from Victoria. Victoria's back. Hi, Survivor Podcast. Hi, Joanne Stacy. This is Victoria from Maryland. It's been a long time since I have class feedback for the show, but I just keep forgetting. I usually remember to leave feedback around 4 o'clock 
on Saturday um, when I see that the listener feedback pops up on my podcast list and I'm like fizzled. I forgot to get But I have been listening to the podcast. I appreciate everything that you guys do. I appreciate all the super fans. I really enjoy listening to everybody's opinions and their thoughts on the shows. I love hearing all the children and everybody kind of just talking about their lives and stuff. It's really cool to feel connected to others. Even though I haven't met anybody or talked to anybody else, like I still feel like there's that bond there. So I really appreciate this podcast. First things first, I kind of knew that that tribe was going to go to tribal council, though I did not have Larissa picked. I actually had Angelina going home. I thought mm-hmm. that they were going to stay David strong. I thought Mike was going to flip, so I was wrong in that regard. I didn't think that picking Natalie last week was the best strategic move just because of the faces that all, everybody else had when they seen that, you know, there was a Goliath folded off before. So I was kind of intrigued. I was just intrigued that they kind of stayed Goliath strong this time around. Other than that, in the episode, I also felt really, 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 really bad that Angelina's hand started bleeding, and I was just pleased. I know you guys want to give up, but you guys are really struggling at that point. So I was surprised that they kept going. I was inspired that they kept going. I was surprised, too, to see that Mike had kind of given up. Even when Larissa was like, hey, you know, maybe they were just like, no, it's pretty much over. So I was a little surprised by that. I was surprised by Elizabeth. I didn't think all of that was necessary. It kind of threw me for a loop. I wasn't expecting, like, the fate that she made kind of scared me a little bit. So, yeah, I was not happy with that. I kind of felt like Carl took a lot um, and Davey took a lot just because, like, her attitude just totally changed. And I actually don't even really like it. I didn't appreciate it so much. I was happy to see that Christian is killing the game. I love, love, love him. He's from Maryland representing Baltimore. And I'm just, yes! He doesn't have the accent, which kind of surprises me for them to have, like, a Mason Dixon alliance. I'm like, where's your accent? But that's just me being from Maryland. He's killing the game. I love that he's able to kind of blend in with everybody. My USB is John. I'm happy with the edit that he's getting. But, yeah, that's all I had to say. It took me, like, two years to finally get all of this out. So I appreciate everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this podcast. You don't know how much this means to me. And I hope to hear everybody's opinions. I love everybody. Straight out of Maryland. Bye. Excellent. Great to have you back, Victoria. Next up, we got an email from Nathan in Portsmouth, Virginia. Hello, Joanne, Stacy, and Survivor fans. This episode has two main things that I will remember. One was perhaps the toughest decision that a castaway had to make regarding who to vote out, at least in my armchair quarterback opinion. The other was the biggest laugh I've ever had watching Survivor, and I've watched every episode since season two. Mike's decision to vote out Angelina or Lirsa was one of the most difficult decisions I remember in recent Survivor history. I think Angelina is a bigger threat in the long run, but keeping her would show those on the original Goliath tribe that he is still Goliath strong. It seems that Mike also realized this, and he noted that this decision could set the course for the rest of the game. Keeping Angelina could mean that she ends up taking him out later in the game. However, voting her out gives the number to the previous David tribe, which could come back to haunt him. The Davids could take out the Goliaths one by one, or the Goliaths could target him because he took out two Goliaths and partner with some Davids to get the votes needed to get him out. But there is no guarantee that the Davids or the Goliaths will stick together, so those old tribal lines might not make a difference, or they could make a big difference. He also has no idea of what is going on in the other tribes and what everyone else is thinking. This is why it was such a difficult decision. Most of the time, I have an opinion of who the castaway should target, but I kept saying, hmm, as I rolled through the scenario in my mind, Ultimately, I think Mike made the right decision voting out Lyrsa. 
This way, he can tell the Goliaths he stayed strong, even though he voted out Natalie, because they still have the numbers. He can also tell the Davids that he has opened a change, as he proved by voting out Natalie, if he needs to go that way to make it further. Either way, it allows him to keep a target off his back while he sees how things play out. The biggest laugh I've ever had in Survivor is when Lyrsa said she was upset getting voted out, but she was more upset that she had to sit next to Natalie at the reunion show and be with her at Ponderosa. There haven't been a lot of times that I laughed out loud at Survivor, but this one made me laugh out loud. I'm really looking forward to the merge as there is bound to be so many options for the players. I'm beginning to jump on the bandwagon of those who think John will be the winner. It just seems that he is trying to keep his head low enough to stay in the game, but high enough to make moves and be noticed as a serious player. I know Christian gets a lot of screen time, but I can't see everyone letting him get to the final because he would be a serious threat based on his underdog story and his ability to speak well using memorable quotes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, good job. Up next, we have a voice clip from Nicola. Hey, guys. It's Nicola from Lexington. No Jackson this week. He hasn't seen the episode yet, and I actually just finished watching it Friday. I had family in from England, so I didn't get a chance to watch it during the week. Anyway, it was a great episode. I was sorry to see Larissa go. Undoubtedly, I probably had her safe in JSFL. Haven't really checked yet. But I might have cracked 20 points this week. Woo! Getting up there. Enjoyed the episode. The challenges were fun. That bird bath looked, the giant bird bath thing and the immunity challenge looked really heavy and awkward, so I'm not sure I could have done any better than is it Jabini? So yeah, and that's just about it. I just wanted to send a little clip in. Uh, let you know I appreciate everything you do. Love hearing from everybody, and I hope everybody has a great weekend. Go Cat! Cheers! Uh, we'll probably have Jackson back next week, hopefully. All right. Great to hear from you, Nicola. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Sophie and Layla. Hi, John and Stacey, Survivor fans too. Last week, I didn't get my feedback, but everyone said exactly what I thought, and I had a good time listening to everybody about Natalie going home. Yay. So far, I've got all my points, all my save points every week I've chosen nice. correctly. I cannot believe it, but I have not got a vote out point yet. And like um, Joanne, I also voted for Angelina, and then Lisa went home. I think I would have preferred Lisa to stay. In the end, I actually started to really like her and would have rather her win the money than Angelina. Angelina's, yeah, she's playing well and strategically, which is what we all want to see, but I'm just not feeling any sort of connection or bond. I don't like how she's so conniving. I know it's part of the game, but I don't know. I really don't want to see her winning. So I'm hoping that next week um, her lack of humility is her downfall. I don't know. I think that she's going to probably target Christian, but I think it's going to come back to bite her. I think John and everybody will actually end up protecting Christian, and I'm hoping she'll go home, but I doubt it. Now, as far as who to choose to win, I don't know, Christian or Davey for me, I'm not sure. But it was a really good episode. I really did like the challenges. Layla, what did you think of the challenges this week? It was really funny because she kept on tipping down the water mm -hmm. every time she did it. And she's and I liked how I think it was I think it was Lisa who said, I'll give her something, but it's my sock which has a hole in it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You've got a really good memory. And then so what's happening next week? Merge. And why do you like the match? Because they all have different challenges, and it gets funner to see what they earn. Mm -hmm. Like what? Mm, they either get to, like, sometimes they get to go on a boat with food and massages overnight, mm -hmm. or they get to go somewhere with actual yeah. <laughs> beds and stuff, which is nice. All right. Well, that's about it. I don't even have really got much more to say, except I hope Elizabeth um, <laughs> cheers up a bit. Overall, she's playing well, but, yeah, her pain must have got to her. Yeah, with the clicking, right? It hurt. <laughs> what did you think of her temper tantrum? <laughs> Was it scary? Or? Yeah. Oh. Okay, guys, have a great week, because you're probably listening to it on Monday, and hope you had a good weekend. Take care, and hope you're well. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Sophie. Thanks, Layla. You guys did a great job. Good teamwork. Yeah, there's an extra video of Elizabeth, too, and you can see where... You could see a little bit of why Carl was having a hard time with her 
when she wanted to chop the bamboo up and flatten it out for better rest because she ends up letting one of the chickens loose and he has to go catch it. Well, I think he was probably already mad about that when that I don't think they've been getting along. He seems a little fussy about her. He's he's definitely chickens. soured on her. Yes. I think is a a nice way to say it. So, yeah, there's there's options he says in terms of who he wants to support on his tribe. So it made Kara very happy. Yes. Yeah, she seems to be doing well. She will listen to him complain about Elizabeth any time. All day, every day. Yeah, she's sharp that way. All right, thanks again, Sophie and Layla. Next up, we got an email from Christiana in Boston. Hello, everyone. I feel like I say this every week, but wow, another great episode. Is Angelina tanking her game for a jacket? She is over-strategizing and thinking three steps ahead with every decision she makes, which normally is a strength in Survivor, but when it comes become so obvious to everyone else in the game, you make yourself a target. I was pretty convinced Angelina was going home and that may have been the better option to get rid of her before the merge. But for whatever reason, Nick and Mike preferred to keep her around over Lyrsa. Something tells me they might regret that choice in the near future. Over at Tiva, Gabby finally starts playing and I was very happy about it for about 10 seconds before she started crying again. I am looking forward to seeing where the Allison Gabby relationship goes because we didn't see much come out of it, come out of that conversation in this episode, which makes me think that they were priming the viewers for a future post merge alliance. I think you're right about that. Moving to the challenge, you couldn't help but feel sorry for Jabini. They really were giving it all and were trying their best not to give up and communicate effectively, but they were just physically outmatched. It reminded me of that challenge in Game Changers when my own personal queen of survivors, Cherie Fields, couldn't cross the balance beam, and Jeff let her finish it after the challenge was over. If these pre-merge episodes are so great, I cannot wait for what the merge has in store for the castaways. I like your thinking there. I have Alec going next week because I have been waiting for him to self-destruct since his flip vote a few weeks back, and the merge seems like the perfect timing for that. Have a good week, everyone. Thanks, Christiana. I think there's definitely some logic there. He, he should be one of the potentials for sure, especially given what they showed us on Next Time on Survivor, right? Because he was hustling to try to help the Davids, and that's going to draw fire for him, I would imagine. Yeah, I think I read something, too, where uh, Lyrsa had said that that jacket she wore out there was great because she could stand out in the rain, do whatever she wanted, and it would dry in a few seconds, Mm -hmm. you know, or a few minutes, whatever. It didn't take it long at all to to dry. It was made for that. And that um, Angelina's sweater just would, you get a sweater wet, it doesn't dry. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, especially if it's made out of cotton. If yeah. it's wool, uh, that's a different story, but that didn't look no, like wool. No, it's not wool. Good deal. Thanks again, Christiana. Next up, got a call from Drew's crew. Hey, everyone. This is Drew and Charlie and and Milo. And Milo. All right. Let's get started. The exciting news is that Julie had two vote out points in a row, so that's good. The other exciting news is that I didn't at least lose a safe point, so that's good too, twice in a row. But there was some interesting uh, dynamics happening this week. The Elizabeth thing. I actually kind of like Angelina, so I was glad that that didn't work out the way that it was looking like. And I have to say that I'm not really on the hating Dan train. I, I mean, of course, they made him look really idiotic at the start with the showmance and stuff. But I don't necessarily think he's going to be that guy voted out with two idols in his pocket. You know, I guess time will tell. Maybe he just will, you know, but I'm looking forward to that. I think he's OK. And this bro chacho thing is going somewhere. We were trying to remember that that guy's group with Reynolds and Eddie and Malcolm, right? Were they just the three amigos? Is that what they were called? Yeah, the three amigos. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what they called them. OK, that was in Survivor Caramoan. The other thing is, I'm just really tired of hearing about the jackets. I just hope that they just stop talking about jackets. I'm just so tired of hearing about it. So that's all I'm going to say about it, because I'm tired of hearing about it. Other than that, (laughs) Merge looks like it's going to be just really interesting. Who knows how things are going to shake up. I think the Goliaths are kind of probably done. I think a few of them will stick together, but a lot of them, I think, are over it. So it was nice to see Allison highlighted. Uh, Christian is getting a lot of time. I feel like he could be in the final four. I kind of hope that Gabby can pull something together. I kind of do. I I don't really foresee it, but it will be interesting to see what Christian, Dan, and John can accomplish, too. I don't know. You know, there's just a lot of unknowns as you go into the merge, but let's just go ahead and call it for today. I think the first out at the merge is going to be maybe Elizabeth or maybe Gabby. That'd be kind of a bummer, but 
I don't know, maybe people are finding it over Angelina as a whole, but we'll see. How's that for commitment? Okay, Charlie, who do you think is going to be voted out next? I think Dan. Oh, Dan? Okay, blindsided, two idols. Who do you think, babe? Um... Oh, you think Gabby is next? We'll see, we'll see. Um, Milo is more interested in demolishing the little slinky that he found, so I don't think he wants to make a pick today. But anyway, winner of the week is going to be, I guess, Angelina for sticking around. Uh, Loser of the week is going to be... I hesitate to give it to Elizabeth because she was just venting, but I don't know. I think she went about that all the wrong way, so sure, we're not. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to go over today, so talk to you guys later. Do you have anything else to say, buddy? I like all of that. You like all of them? Okay, say bye. Bye, how are you? Say bye. Oh, that's your spooky Halloween voice. Yeah. Okay, see you later. All right, thanks for sharing the spooky Halloween voice. Good job, crew. Next up, got a call from Brandon. Hey, what's up, Joanna Stacy and Survivor fans? This is Brandon from Cleveland. I thought this episode was pretty good. I think it was the weakest episode thus far this season. Maybe that's more affected by Tribal Council because I guess it was one of the more straightforward ones, but I still thought the episode was great. I liked everything that we saw at camp and everything. I will say I kind of believe that that tribe, Jabini, was going to go the whole time because I'm not 100% sure, but I believe in the previously on Survivor, they only show the Jabini tribe. So to me, that kind of telegraphed that maybe they were the ones that was going to go to Tribal Council. We didn't see any other brooding story, I guess, from one of the other two tribes. So I kind of thought that was going to happen all along. I was definitely hoping Angelina was going to leave. Not a big fan of hers. I think she's a good villain. I mean, it's not like I feel feel like she's, like, terrible or anything. She adds value to the show, but I'm definitely rooting against her. And But that's pretty much my feedback for this week. Only other thing I want to say is I am jealous of Nicola and Jackson um, for going to Holiday World last week. They have a awesome wooden roller coaster there called The Voyage that is definitely on my bucket list to ride eventually. So hopefully one of these upcoming summers I can get out there to ride it. It's not too far from where I stay. It's only the next state over, so shouldn't be too big of a thing. But anyway, I will talk to you guys next week. Peace. All right. Thanks, Brandon. The previously on Survivor usually is about the tribe that just went to tribal council. They're Probes is just sort of rehashing how they got there and went off. So, And we did have other potential targets. We had Elizabeth acting up and the Gabby-Allison alliance and this idea of targeting Dan. So, I don't know. It didn't seem as foregone to me. Plus, I wasn't sure who was going between Lursa or Angela either, were you? No. As we were watching. Obviously, since I chose. <laughs> no, I mean, wrong. as we are watching. He said as, oh, as okay. he was watching, it was obvious to him. That's why it was the weakest episode. I don't know. It just struck me a little different, but I appreciate you sharing that. Thanks, Brandon. Next up, got a call from Cameron. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. This is Cameron from North Carolina calling in with the week six listener feedback. I feel like this podcast's feedback participants have a divide in how great Lyrsa was competitively. I think we saw after this reward challenge that she really wasn't anything to brag about. Gabby and Allison's dialogue didn't do much for me, honestly. Gabby should have realized that they probably won't go to tribal based off the dynamic of how well Tiva was doing in competitions, and that emerge is bound to happen soon. Talk about keeping your mouth shut. Elizabeth, what is up with you? She acts like they all should have fixed the bamboo already, and that they're all disrespecting her. If this was something that was really ailing her, she didn't have to go off on them. She could have talked about splitting the bamboo before taking it and doing it. I said a couple weeks ago that blindfold challenges stressed me out to watch, but even more so with this balancing one of the water. I thought it was kind of funny how when referring to the immunity challenge, Jeff branded it a survivor blowout. Seems to me he has sort of a McDonald's-esque method of naming stuff. I mean, it wasn't a blowout, it was a survivor blowout. But speak of a blowout, if I didn't know better, I'd have thought they were throwing it. That was even worse than when Zapatera purposefully threw that challenge in Redemption Island to take out Russell. Alright, that vote really did surprise me though. Again, referring to earlier, there probably is going to be a merge soon. Nick and Mike would have been way safer taking Angelina out then. Plus, I said she'd go home in JSFL, whatever, but (laughs) I don't know. I still thought Lyrsa going was sort of a waste. Next time on Survivor, lo and behold, the merge. So, not related to the episode itself here, but last week one of the feedback sent in talked about returning players. And returning players has always been something I've paid attention to. 
I do love seeing returning players. And yeah, I do know about next season. I'm not gonna say about it. I'm not gonna say anything about it for those who don't want to know about it. And I won't say that returning players playing again is good or bad. Rather in itself, casting for it has to go right for it to work out. For example, Cambodia, Micronesia, and Heroes vs. Villains were all great seasons. But then you've got the outliers like Game Changers, Redemption Island, and to an extent the original All-Stars. Alright everyone, hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekends and beginnings of next week. Joanne and Stacy, thank you guys, and I will see you all at the merge. Excellent. Thanks for that analysis and those perspectives, Cameron. Next up, got an email from Jack in California. This most recent episode slowed down for me compared to the last two. It was still a good episode, though. During the reward challenge, Jabini seemed to have been struggling with the weight of those coconuts, but they had a great comeback when it came to throwing the rings. Those saucers in the immunity challenge seemed to be heavy, and so I would probably have struggled to keep stable as well. Tiva did amazing at this challenge, and I'm not at all surprised that Christian was put in charge of the puzzle aspect of it. Though Christian said gives Allison credit for that. Yeah, he does in, in an, an extra, extra video. Cl- yeah. yeah, he said it was really her. And that he liked putting her out there and not just being him. He liked the... spreading the targets around, I think yeah, was his exactly. general phrase. Yeah. Okay, back to Jack. I'm liking this cast a lot, and the most recent standout to me would be Christian, even though it seems like he could be in trouble next week because of the merge. Bamboo would seem to be hard to sleep on, and so I can't blame Elizabeth for trying to get more comfortable. But the way she approached the topic was interesting. If I had to be the one to approach the tribe to get more comfortable, a more comfortable bed, I would have suggested it instead of doing what Elizabeth did. I won't say I'm too shocked to see Lyrsa go. I originally thought that she might have been gone next, but went against my gut and put her down as safe in JSFL. <laughs> Bring on the merge and the second half of the game. That's right. All right. Thanks, Jack. Up next, we have a voice clip from David. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. It's David in Pittsburgh. I'm starting on a dark note. I just wanted to say that I live... 10 minutes away from the Tree of Life Synagogue where the uh, shooting took place last week. And to say that this town's been shaken is um, an understatement. Um, I thought I had no connection to anyone, uh, but the next day on Facebook, I saw that one of the victims was the doctor of five of my friends, and they spoke very highly of him. He sounds like he was a great guy, and apparently he... um, was killed running out to help people, not not hiding from the shooter. So the past week's been pretty dark. I don't want to be superficial about this, but the, when I watch Survivor, I can let the rest of the world go away just for a little while, and then I have your recap to look forward to, and then the fan feedback. So it does make a difference for a lot of us. Okay, back to Survivor. I still can't get over this short-lived Women's Alliance. And right now, there seems to be a connection with Gabby and Allison. And I think Angelina and Cara still have a connection. We'll know that after the merge. But how did the men take over this season so easily? We're down to eight men and only five women. And so far, no female contestant has even said anything about it. I'm I'm really surprised because we have some strong women there, but they're just letting the men take over. My predictions for the past episode, I was right with everything. And that's unusual. I said Javeni would lose again. I said uh, Larsa would go home. And that's because I thought that if they did lose, Mike really didn't have many options. He already has a huge target on his back after taking out two Goliaths. So it made sense in his decision. But this is something I keep wondering about. If he and Nick each voted for a different uh, woman, they would tie. So then it would go to a second vote. And so this time, if it tied, then it goes to rocks, right? And that means that Lursa and Angelina would be safe and Mike and Nick would have to pick rocks. Is that right? So I think it made sense that 
Mike would have talked Nick into changing his vote. And I think of the two of them, Mike is the one with the, with the, um, the bigger lead. After the merge, are, will the previous teams of David and Goliath still stay strong to their teammates? Then if so, will Alex have a target on his back for voting out Natalia? Or maybe because Mike and Angelina did the same thing, they'll all just move on. Can't wait to see what's going to happen. And once again, I do appreciate all that you do. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, David. I appreciate you sharing that and connecting us to what's going on there for you and the other folks there in the city. It's certainly a horrible tragedy. And Our best wishes to all the families and our condolences. Yeah. And we've heard that so many times about how the connection here can help. Sometimes you just need a little distraction your, things can get overwhelming and we definitely have that here in this community when we get together to talk about survivor huh That's yeah true. makes it a big positive thanks again david next up we got a call from rodney hey joanne and stacy and survivor fans everywhere it's rodney from illinois it's been a while since i've gave feedback i've had some family issues with medical problems and uh sick kids but everything seems to be getting back on track and let's get to the episode this week i did not see Lyrsa going. I underestimated Nick's ability to to play the game and be willing to work with Mike so much. And I was really surprised to see that he was willing to cut Lyrsa to keep Mike happy. But that's actually really good gameplay on Nick's behalf. Most of the players, I think, going forward are going to make for an interesting interesting show. I understand that that John and the Brochachos think that they're doing good. But if you you rewatch this week's episode, there's a point where Dan is given a confessional and he's talking about how he is going to trust and has a uh, strong backing in Christian in the middle of saying that it cuts to a scene where I believe it is somebody, I think it was Christian saying, you know, bad idea in the middle of Dan's confessional. I thought that was some interesting yeah. bit of editing. If you go back and watch it, it's easy to miss. I think that's a little editing foreshadowing of Christian staying with Gabby and and uh, helping to blindside Dan this next week. And I think we're going to get that double idle blindside because Dan is a perfect <laughs> merge boot. I think it's it's going to be super complex and intricate, and I think that it's going to end up with Carl playing his, his idle blocker and Dan playing his idol, and mixture of Goliath and David sorting out Dan, and Dan's going to walk home with that one idol. I think it's going to be a good gun show, and I think that the producers are going to be happy with the way that uh, everything turns out with the new idol block. As far as gameplay goes, I think that we got some of Allison and Gabby to foreshadow the upcoming events at the merge. I think that the Brochachos are in trouble, and I think that Christian is only going to be a Brochacho for one more episode. Um, other than that, I'm really enjoying the season, and uh, good to listen to everybody's feedback. Bye. Excellent. Thanks, Rodney. Okay, so if Dan did go home, say he was he was mm-hmm. uh, he was voted out, he still had one idol left. Somehow the Davids are able to s- to swing a couple of uh, Goliaths over. They got Alec. Maybe they okay, got Mike. That's done. Yeah. yeah. Now would, they're even again. Would, six six. An, Sorry. Would the, Dan ask Kara to come over and or Kara, whatever her name is, and try to come over and hug him and slip her the extra idol? Oh, I see. That's why you were so eager to get there. You wanted to. I know, and someone kept interrupting it. me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and would he be allowed to do yeah, that? Yeah, can you give it away after you're gone? I don't know. Well, you know if that happened, they would let him do it. I think the idol's dead when you get voted out with it. So it may mm, not, it may have lost its power. Not if it hadn't left tribal council, maybe not. I see. I would like to know. That's why I would like <laughs> for something like that to happen. It's uh-huh. like, okay, co- come and hug me goodbye and, uh-huh. you know, slip it to her, stick it in her pocket, something. Yep, okay. Okay. Just a thought. <laughs> yeah. Just a thought. Yep. Thanks, Rodney. Next up, we got a call from Jacqueline. She's finally back for this season. What is up, Joanna and Stacy? What is up, Survivor fans? This is Jacqueline from Orange County, California. I made my feedback in. Yay! Yay. <laughs> my work schedule has been super crazy. Been working days to nights, to days to nights. So, yeah, you could just imagine. <laughs> my sleep schedule is all messed up, too, so... 
fun. I have been listening to all the content you guys have been putting out there and been enjoying every bit of it. And especially this season. Oh my gosh. Bravo to the casting team and bravo mm-hmm. to the editing team. The editing yeah, has been phenomenal this season. So good. I, I have nothing, I no gripes about the season whatsoever. Good, 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 good. And, okay, so for about last night's episode, I'm so sad to see Lyrsa go. She was probably one of the very few females that I actually really, really liked this season. And yeah, David Bloom, one of his rules, you gotta be flexible. And she was definitely not flexible. Her only real true ally left on that small tribe was Nick. And guess what? Nick threw her underneath the bus. She should have just ran with Angelina and made it to the merge. She knew merge was coming. She has other people that she could play with next week. And she could have taken that extra day and plotted against Angelina next week. There's so much more gameplay she has left to do. And she just scrounded it. Very disappointing. (laughs) I'm really loving the um, storyline between Gabby and Christian. Uh, As everybody has been saying, that's going to come to a head very soon. That's going to be so interesting to watch and see where his votes are going to go. And damn, Christian's been getting such a freaking good edit. It's almost Mm -hmm. kind of scary how good of edit he's getting, which means either he might be winning or he's going to like go down in like flames and we're all going to just be like sobbing with our tissues (laughs) when he leaves and gets voted out. (laughs) And I also can see the storyline of the David versus Goliath and blurring the lines. We saw Allison talking about it. We saw Mike talking about it a little bit. Definitely Christian as well. And we see it a lot in next week's preview with Angelina. Seems like she rounded about all the Goliaths and blurted out the most horrific line I've ever heard. We should vote out Christian. (laughs) Excuse me? Vote out our national treasure? Are you kidding me? But you know what? Kudos to her because he is kind of like the glue that's like holding that whole tribe together and the fact that she's spotted that so early on and is already targeting him but I think she's going home next week she's not asking anybody who they should vote out she's telling them which is not really good gameplay because people don't like that she's been playing very hard we saw like last night's episode how she was saying that other people were saying that all she wants to do is talk strategy i cannot wait to hear what everybody else has to say joanna hope your friend is doing better i love y'all so much bye all right good to have you back jacqueline thank you next up we got an email from josh the plush moose from massachusetts dear joanna and stacy the immunity challenge suck the joy out of the episode for me <laughs> okay Watching the obviously underpowered Jabini struggle endlessly with the 150-pound stone saucer was painful and inevitable, given how the tribe swap had gone. I guess the challenge staff didn't have the time or budget to come up with something that wasn't so blatantly unfair. Sigh. This week's observations. Joanne, your voice is fine. Okay, thank you. I send emails because I have a voice made for newspapers. Lyrsa wants to sock it to Angelina. I think Angelina wanted a jacket to hide her naked ambition. The underwater fish NATO was mesmerizing. Yes, indeed it was. I'm not sure why, but Christian and Snorkel and Fins reminded me of Rick Moranis and Ghostbusters. Oh, that's good. I can see that. John looked like he wanted to take Jabini to Slamtown when he saw Natalie was gone. What genius thought giving knives to hangry people was a good thing? <laughs> Was that ring toss or pinball? Rings kept bouncing off one peg and landing on another. I think things are about to get hot for Dan, and I don't mean eating peppers. The brochachos were cute. I wonder how tight they'll be after the merge. I predict Jeff will call Christian a Goliath in bloom in this week's previously on Survivor. I think Gabby hit the bottom of the Gabby Gulch and may finally be crawling out. Doc Purple's bedside manner was a win-win. Gabby got reassurance. Doc got to talk. (laughs) Elizabeth wants a comfy place to sleep. If she isn't careful, it'll be at Ponderosa. Elizabeth doesn't like lazy or stupid people. Which one is Davy? Which one is Carl? When Elizabeth made her mad face, I thought we'd see steam shooting from her ears. Yeah, she definitely looks cartoonish. (laughs) It's a toddler having a fit. I'm telling you, that's that face. 
The Survivor Gods must play D&D. They gifted Jabini with the sloshing stone saucer of Sisyphus. <laughs> and they failed their saving throw. Christian pounding on puzzle pieces reminded me of the chimps in the old Amico ad. Everybody at Tribal has a plan. Lyrsa's plan reached the Mike Tyson point. The punch in the face. Frogs Mike and Nick gave Scorpion Angelina a ride to the merge. He's going to the fables for this one. That won't end well. Lyrsa compared herself to a cat, but she didn't land on her feet at Tribal. Next time, the merge is here and battle lines are drawn. Will Goliath Strong prevail or will chaos reign? Anyway, that's it for me for now. Thanks, Joanna Stacy, for all you do. Can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say. Thank you, Josh. Well done as always, sir. Hey, Jeremiah's back too. It's like a reunion show this week. Right. Hello, Joanna and Stacy. Hello, Survivor fans. This is Jeremiah Panhorst here from Southern California. And I know it's been a while since I've left some feedback, so I thought it'd be time to jump on board. I'm definitely loving this season. What a great cast, right? I know you guys have mm-hmm. been talking about all season. They're very interesting to me. Obviously, a lot of characters, but, it, but even the, pl- the good ones that are playing good game are very interesting as well. One thing I like about this season is there's not one or two people really dominating the game like we had last season with Wendell and Dominic. You know, it's really a wide open game, and that's primarily the reason why I wanted to feed in some feedback. Is I'm sure I won't be the only one, but I want to discuss about like you know going into the merge, who who do we like the best? Like who do we think is going to prevail? Right? Um, obviously, since the beginning of the season, I really felt like a David somehow was going to win this thing. So that's kind of where I'm leaning towards. I really feel like there's a lot of question marks with these Goliaths, right? You like yeah. pick, take for instance John. I like John. But he's been so under the radar, I don't know what to expect from him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but he could. He could potentially come out here in the second half. Um, you know, got a hot cop. I like hot cop. I think, you know, he, you know, we make fun of him, but, you know, he's not in a bad position, but he's also going to be a big target. Now, Angelina, of course, has played the best game probably everybody uh, on the Goliath tribe outside of Mike. I have been really impressed with Mike. Mike is my surprise so far this season, and I really like him. And I think he's going to side with the Davids eventually and uh, be a big factor. So he's probably my number one. I, I, it would not surprise me at all if Angelina gets blindsided to <laughs> come up uh, to be a merge boot. That would be interesting. Uh, so anyway... I think I think a Dave is going to win, and if I had to put my money on right now, you know, I will admit I'm really leaning towards Christian or Nick. Uh, one of those two, I really feel like might win this thing, and I know Christian, of course, has gotten lots of airtime mainly because he's great television. Uh, the question is, is he going to be a Yaw man where he just gets a lot of airtime and doesn't win? Or could he win? You know, he's actually playing a pretty good game. As awkwardly social as he is, he's really good. So that's kind of where I'm leaning towards right now. And um, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. It's going to be exciting. I, I do think I'm going to probably keep Dan as my USB only because it's 24 points is a lot to give up. Unless, mm-hmm. of course, he becomes the merge boot. Then that makes it kind of easy for me, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> So my predictions, like I said, for coming up uh, for the merge, I definitely think it'll be a Goliath, and I'm leaning towards like a Dan or Angelina. I think a big player probably will go home next week. Uh, so what we'll see, uh, but it's hard to say. All right, well, that's it for me. Uh, you guys have a great rest of the week. Can't wait to hear what everybody else has to say. Obviously, I'm enjoying the podcast. I love you guys, and then, of course, I love all of the listeners, and I know I'm going to get a lot of good insight here on the listener feedback. So that's it. You guys take care, and until next time, this is Jeremiah. Outstanding. Good job, sir. Hope to have more soon. Next up, got a call from Jen. Hi, everyone. This is Jen in California. Okay, so I really did not expect that vote-off to happen. I mean, I know Lyrsa was going to be voted off at some point, but I really thought Angelina being the bigger threat was definitely the one to go this week. And the reason I think that is I feel like Mike, in knowing that he was on the bottom of the Goliaths, is putting a lot of importance on his alliance with Nick. And as such, if they stuck together at the merge, Mike would in essence be in the majority. Because at the merge, even though it becomes an individual game, there will still be some tribal allegiances, and he would be able to probably seamlessly join the David tribe members. And I'm not certain that he would be on the bottom of that group if he did. So basically, Mike is the one that I thought was going to flip, and not Nick. So what do I think Nick was thinking? Well, obviously, I don't think Nick was willing to draw a rock for Lyrsa. And I'm not even certain that they would have drawn rocks. I heard somewhere that it was probably going to go to fire. If they tied with Lyrsa and Angelina having to make fire in the case of a tie. Nevertheless, 
I have to think that Nick is valuing his alliance with Mike pretty strongly right now. But now that the merge is going to happen, I don't know. Nick's got a lot of irons in the fire. I kind of think he's going to try to blend back in with his Christian alliance. And Christian has actually made some good bonds. The linchpin there, I think, is or will be whether John stays Goliath strong or if he wants to continue to bro down with Deanna and Christian. Come to think of it, that group is looking to be quite formidable if they stay together. Who would be in it? You would have Christian, who has bonds to Gabby and Nick, as well as an alliance with the Brochachos with Dan and John. And Nick has Mike that he can bring in. And Dan will have Kara if she's willing to come back to him. Allison may stick with Gabby. That makes eight. I'm not sure where Angelina or Alec would fall, but let's say that those eight voted together. The vulnerable people would be... Angelina, Alec, Carl, Davy, and Elizabeth. Okay, I'm going to say that Angelina, Alec, Carl, Davy, and Elizabeth are the ones who are at risk for being the first merge boots. I don't know. It's tough to say. I never get my predictions right. I don't think I've ever gotten a merge boot point. But I kind of don't think that they're going to stick uh, along tribal lines like David's with David's and Goliath's with Goliath's. I really don't think so. I've gotten a different vibe from the three tribe format this season. But I think I'm going to pick Carl as my merge boot. We'll see if he gets voted out this week. That's it for me. I can't wait to hear what everyone else has to say. I'm loving this season. It's unpredictable, and the characters have been really good. Stacy, your intro and outro music has been great this season. It's been different, and I've really been enjoying it. Till next well, week. You. Bye. Excellent. Thanks, Jen. I liked all that. I like how you're breaking that down. Good job. Next up, we've got a call from Paul. Hey, Paul in Louisiana here. Okay, so at the immunity challenge, Jabini's two weakest players were easily Mike and Angelina. Yes, Lyrsa had some problems, but that was only because she had trouble getting up and onto that balancing beam. And she always had to get on the highest one, so yeah, bad challenge management there for Jabini. Once she was up there, though, her struggles pretty much ended and Angelina's and Mike's began. Later on, Lyrsa got voted off while the weaker players remained. <sighs> You know, I have to say that I feel that Lyrsa's vote out was a bad decision, especially on Nick's part. It helped solidify Mike's ties to Goliath and paints Nick as a traitor to the Davids. And even though Mike has now sent a clear message that he's a Goliath, well, Goliath may not be very receptive towards him after a few more Davids are gone. I just can't help shake the feeling that Mike would have been better off taking out Angelina and joining the Davids, who would then have the numbers and no doubt about what side Mike is on. That being said, if Mike really wanted to prove where he stands with the Goliaths, he and Angelina should have voted out Nick. It would have been one heck of a blindside, and let's face it, Nick's mm. going to be harder to get out of the game after the merge, and when he's voted off and sitting there on the jury, he'll be bitter towards the Goliaths that he helped take to power with Mike. So, yeah, Nick should have been Angelina and Mike's vote off this week. And that big bromance at Goliath, <sighs> you know, I just can't shake the feeling that Christian is being strung along and being set up as a vote-off later on. He's become too trusting of Dan and John. They may not have it in their heads yet, but when push comes to shove, they'll surrender the geek. Of that, I'm sure. <laughs> so I guess I'm switching my USB next week. Angelina just rubs me the wrong way. She has ideas, but I honestly feel that luck has been more of a factor in her designs working out and that other people make them happen, while Angelina just sits back and thinks she's some sort of a survivor genius. From the looks of things, she's going to merge with guns blazing, and it may very well be her downfall, especially after claiming to be a mastermind. Last week, I was sure I was on Team Elizabeth, but after her meltdown, eh, I'm just not that sure. Let's just say that she's got one hour to prove herself to me once again. Next to go... Well, I think it's going to be a big fight to lure players to the other sides, but it will surely be a real David versus Goliath showdown. I think Nick will flip to Goliath, but he'll be at the bottom of the totem pole there. I really don't think that Christian is in trouble yet. If Davy gets worried, well, he's got an idol and a Goliath might go. Wow, I'm at a loss as to who to pick each week. Great season, huh? Well, lastly... I'll miss everyone next week, as we will be in Greece when the episode airs. Hopefully, I'll catch up on the plane when we head back home, and then I'll be able to make the following week's feedback. So forgive the tardiness of the roster and my lack of input. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Paul. 
that's interesting that they could have taken out Nick. I wonder if they had that discussion. I I don't think so because Lyrsa would not go along. It would have thrown them right back ha- they into. They didn't need the- her to. They needed Lyrsa to vote for Nick and Nick to vote for Lyrsa and then Angelina. This is what Paul was oh, saying. Oh, then Angelina okay, and Mike could have taken out taken out Nick. Oh right. With if two, they got her if, to vote. If they got yeah, if they got them to split. So yeah, that would have been something. But you take the chance of them voting together anyway. Oh, on a tie, yeah. Yeah, and making it a tie again. So mm-hmm. I don't think it would have stuck on a revote. No, so anyway. no, it wouldn't. People would pivot and whisper and figure things out. I'm well, sure to the avoid other the thing rocks. is. I like that uh, idea, though. Good job, Paul. Why would a lot of those people have any reason to go back with Carl or Davey, like Christian and Gabby and Nick? And mm-hmm. now even Elizabeth. Because they were why did they split want to, to begin with them. They had split over the uh, Jessica vote anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. And, so you know, a... they Carl was very open about wanting Nick out. So mm-hmm. he knew they're not really with him. So Yeah, I also think that's part of why I don't think people will be too surprised that Lear's just gone since Nick had initially targeted her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that looks like him just sort of following through on that that initial plan though i think you know he and uh, christian could get back together nick is in he's undoubtedly in a good position because he's got this tie to mike and that gives him a tie to the goliaths but he's got that connection the alliance with christian he's got an alliance with elizabeth he's got a lot of ways to pull people in to help dynamically adapt and like jacqueline was talking about being able to adapt is super key to this game well, and Davy had no problem having other strong men because he's like, oh, I can beat him. Well, you know, I can beat him in the, I can beat Alec. He said he could beat Alec, and then he said Alec's basically a shield, and then so are those other guys' shields. I don't know that he said he could beat Dan and John, but he said that. Well, he must think he he's liked not the idea targeting of, them. He he liked the idea of having them as shields ahead of him, which is true. Yeah. Yep. Good to have some meat shields when you're a physical threat. So I really like all of that because you really don't know which way this is going to go. Yeah, at no, all. super exciting as we head into this because merge. I'm really charged up about it. Because some of the Goliaths are a little split up, and definitely the Davids are are broken up. Speaking of David, David in his feedback, sorry, different go, go perspective. Ahead. He was asking, Squirrel. he was asking about how the women had let this happen, but it was really the women that took the women out. If you go back and look at it. I only thought about this afterwards. I wish I thought about it at the end. I was more focused on the other thing that he had mentioned. But Jessica, taken out by Elizabeth and Lyrsa, but primarily Elizabeth, right? And then Angelina, well, she took out Jeremy. B took herself out. You could almost say the same thing for Natalia, that she took herself out given how she interacted with people, right? But then Angelina, again, she's there taking out Natalie and taking out Lyrsa, so... Yeah, Angelina's got a lot of blood on her hands, doesn't she? Look at that. Jeremy, Lyrsa, Natalie. She's got the most takedowns. Well, and if the person voted off this week does not go to the jury, oftentimes they don't. Right. Then she would get to go be with Natalie and Natalia <laughs> and Lyrsa. Yep. Wouldn't that be fun? Yep. Just go, go join the jacket crew, the members only jacket crew. <laughs> So. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, I loved all your feedback. Got me thinking all kinds of different thoughts and super excited for the merge, too. You guys did a great job this week. I wanted to say, Shay, we got a call notification that we had received a call from you, but we never got a voicemail. We reached out to our provider, and they said that there was uh, a call, uh, but there was nothing in it. There was like a few seconds of air in that. No, not amazing. a few seconds. There was... The, there were some three minutes of oh. dead air is what they replied back to us. So I don't know if you butt dialed us. That was <laughs> it, my first thought. It didn't, didn't realize it, or if you if somehow you were on mute when you were talking to us because it was like it was it was a little over three minutes, which is normally what she calls in at. And so sorry if it didn't work out for you, Shay, but we did everything we could to try to find to check it and try to find out what yeah. happened. Yeah. Okay, so we want to thank everybody who took the time to share their thoughts and predictions with us this week. And you did just a fantastic job. 
Huge thanks to Christy for your subscription donation. Thank you so much for keeping that going, Christy. We greatly appreciate your continued support and helping us with the operational costs here at Survivor Fans Podcast. And if you play JSFL, don't forget, make your picks before the deadline, 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific Time on Wednesdays. And you don't have to make that change this week, but start thinking about who you may change your USB to, because that comes after the merge. Next week, yes. Yeah, definitely. I'm thinking about it, but not too seriously, because I really want to... I hope they... You like Jeremiah? You want to hold on to Dan? No. Well, I may and I may not. It just depends on what happens this week, and I'm hoping... Or you're like Jeremiah, and you hope Dan enough. gets voted out so you If can... he's going to go out soon, I would <laughs> hope it would be this week. That would make it uh-huh. so much easier for me. Yeah, that too. So yeah. that would be fine. Just, uh, you know, I, I'm just hoping we get a feel for... Who really is with the other person? You know, what grouping? And I don't know. See, they're pitching we'll that it's all that. Angelina or Christian are on the chopping block. So we're not getting any indication it's Dan. I don't but think Christian's going. I just wish that thing. this that the merge episode was like two two or three hours. That's what I think we really need. So, Well, don't you think that uh, if Carl or, and Davey don't feel safe at all or they don't feel like they have a tight alliance... Won't Carl try to, um, Davey, maybe play his his idol? And Carl, if he, obviously he knows Dan has an idol. Will he try to play the nullifier? Mm-hmm. Because you know Alex told them. Yeah, seems very likely, yes. If yeah, he hadn't told them now, he will tell them since yeah, he's running around ratting them out. Everyone's going to know that Dan has one idol. One, yeah. So, mm, but... Uh, again, can you play two at once? <laughs> <laughs> if you know one's going to be nullified. But the, nobody knows about the nullifier unless Carl told somebody. So Right. Hopefully and there's no it. indication of that, although in Lyrsa's interview, did I say this already? about? Oh, no, this is what I was going to get back to, right? Is that I with know. Only uh, you know what was in your she, head. <laughs> she saw Davey having his special interview. She knew that. She was very, very confident that he had an idol, and she said that she had told Elizabeth about that, but Elizabeth didn't believe her because she saw him being interviewed in a special way, like an idol interview way. Mm, but, well, uh, good on her. Yeah. That she wrecked now, it, and she was right. This comes out in a, you know, in an interview. Mm-hmm. It's not a part of the episode, the so facts, you gotta so. wonder if it's significant in any way. If her, Elizabeth just blew it off and. Because her back's hurting so much, she totally forgot she told her anyway. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, okay, here's the thing that's been bugging me. I thought we were going to wrap up, but I want to talk no, more, too. I had one more thing okay. I have to say because yep. it, it's... They got us it's, all ramped it's, up. It's bothering up. me a little bit. What's that? That they still have... We haven't seen them eat a single chicken. <laughs> and they're being so protective. They know the merge is close. Uh-huh. Why wouldn't they fortify themselves with the chicken? Don't know. Don't know. Why aren't we cooking roast chicken, boiled Mm -hmm. chicken, you know, whatever. Yep. Fire pit chicken. Come on, people. Carl's just looking skinnier and skinnier. You worried about Carl? He's wasting away. And he's talking about how there wasn't a lot of food for the chickens there. So. Well... (laughs) Then eat the chickens. He said they weren't laying eggs. He's like, those chickens aren't laying eggs. Okay, fine. Even more reason to eat one or two. Come on. Chicken a day. They had, what, five? Yeah. Helps keep tribal council away. Yeah. And, you know, if Elizabeth's going to let them get away by, you Yeah, know. exactly. How many times you want to <laughs> And he's upset about down. that. Yeah. Why do you want to waste more energy chasing the chickens mm-hmm. around? Just when you catch it, eat yeah, it. It must not have been a consensus yet to do that. Yeah, I don't think there are any vegetarians on their their tribe, is there, that would object? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that was bugging me because they haven't (laughs) eaten any of the chickens, apparently. Thirteen enter, but there can only be one winner. We're headed to the merge. That is exciting. Yeah, it is. All right, bring it.